as fine a pair as you could ask. The kind of a gift a man of property might give to his uh, wife. Well, let me hear a bit. I want to open up a bit. Or let me have a bit of $80 bid. $80. $80 bid. If I $80 bid, bitty, bitty buy who give a $100 bill? $100 bill. $100 bill if I $100 bill. Let me hear a $125. I'll tell you this, Paul. $125. I have a $125. That stud horse is the answer. With him and... A few good brood mares, and it wouldn't take no time. We'd have the best line of livestock in the whole territory. Well, you don't have to sell me. It's your project. But I'd be careful if I was you. The auctioneer sees that look in your eye, and you got a shit on the crowd. He'll run the price of that stud up over a thousand. Hey, Hoss, if you run short, I have that twenty-seven dollars I saved. I may take you up on that, little buddy. Second time around, at a one twenty-five. Third sold at a one hundred twenty-five dollars. And now, gentlemen, the real high point of this or any other sale. Bring him in, Jose. Gentlemen, I give you Prince Omar. He's coming up now. Now, I'm not going to insult you gentlemen's intelligence by entertaining too low an opening bid. I want to start the bidding at $500. I want to hear a $500 bid. Let me hear a $500 bid. This is Prince Omar, pure gold and horse flesh. Let me hear a $400 bid. A who bid a $400? Come, come, gentlemen. Surely no urging is needed to commence the bidding on this magnificent animal. His splendid configuration, his impeccable bloodline speak for themselves. Now, do I hear a bid of $400? Let me hear a $400 bid. 300. 400. $400 bid of my 400. Who'll make a $500 bid? Who'll bid five? 500. $500 bill I have. 500. 550. 550 bill. 575. 575. 575. Do I hear a six? Who'll bid a six? Let me hear a six. 600. $600 I have. $600 I have. Going at $600. Are you done, gentlemen? Hoss, he'll be gone. Going at $600? $627. Does that bid stand, mister? It stands. He's my agent. $750. $750 I have. Who'll make it eight? Going at $750? Going once at $750? What do you think, Paul? What is it? Fine animal, but it's your decision. Going Go ahead, what? Go That's seven hundred fifty dollars. All through. Eight hundred. Eight hundred dollar bid of my eight hundred dollars. Going at eight hundred. Do I hear eight hundred fifty dollars? Are you all through? Going once at eight hundred dollars. Going at eight hundred twice. Last call. $800. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, where there ever been any of it? Cassie's name, so you'll have to sign the bill of sale. That agent doesn't know that I'm involved. I'm well aware of that. Well, with his commission out, there'll be well over 700 left. But aren't you going to need any of that for yourself? Oh, I'll, I'll get by. Where can I contact you? No need, Kevin. You made a promise to me last night. I'm holding you to it. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? Yes, there is, but you won't do it. You can't change what you are, and we can't change you. So let's just leave it at that, all right? 
I know I've made promises in the past, but can you not understand that I'm caught in the middle? I, with what comes easy, the con, the blarney, the, and what I really want, you and Cassie. But this time it could be different. Kevin, it isn't easy. I know that. If only you could have, have worked as hard at something real. Oh, Kevin, what's the use? Do you believe I love you? Oh, dear heart. It hasn't all been bad, has it? No. No, there have been some wonderful times. Cassie, would you please wait downstairs for your mother and me? We need to talk alone. Oh, no. No, not again. I can't let you do this to me again. Cassie, Cassie, we're leaving now. Cassie, my love. Now, I'll give you my word right now. I'll find us that horse ranch that we've all dreamed about for so long. It'll be a place of our very own. Well, now, what do you say to that, Cassandra, mine? It'll be just like a fairy tale come true. And we'll live there happily ever after. When I was five, I believed every word you said. When I was ten, I wanted to believe some of the things you said. But now I, I can't even do that. Papa, don't lie to us. And don't make us lie for you anymore. Just let us go, please. We'll get along. Just let us go. It shouldn't be much longer now, ma'am. If we'd known you wanted a bank draft instead of cash, I'd have had the money ready for you. Oh, just so we don't miss the stage to Laramie. me. Oh. Well, you have a while. Could I go say goodbye to him? Oh, darling, it might make it harder. Hello, Prince Omar. Hello. <laughs> Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. Well, thanks, but you can't go in there. He spooked wild. Just leave him to me. Easy. Yeah. What happened to him? Oh, he just gets like that sometimes. He'll be all right now. You weren't even afraid of him. Even when he was playing local, you weren't afraid of him at all. Afraid? How can you be afraid of something that you love? Your bank draft and your cash. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Cartwright. You're welcome. I hope you think it's a fair price. Well, it's uh, what my husband felt it should bring. I'm sorry your husband isn't in town. If he has any more stock like that Prince Omar, I should like to talk to him about acquiring some. Well, I'm, I'm sure he'd be very interested. In... It's unfortunate that he's uh, out scouting for a new ranch right now. Sure, fine looking at him. Uh, he's sort of her horse. I, I mean, she knows him. Hey. Mr. Cartwright, this is my daughter, Cassandra. Hello. Huh. Cassandra? Hello. Well, I guess we're ready to go. Cassie, Mr. Cartwright's been so kind as to offer us a ride as far as Virginia City. Hey, that's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll take the horse from you, sweetheart. Please be good to him. I'll, uh, I'll do my best, sweetheart. Oh. All right.
got a lot of spunk for an old, tired horse. What do you mean, old, tired? Yeah, what is he, what, 14, 15? Joseph, take another look at that animal. Yeah, he's, he's got to be a little older than that. Yeah. We must have got a good buy on him. What, you pay $100? I paid $800 for him. <laughs> $800? You got to be kidding me. Were you drunk? Joseph. I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. Relax. Such a beautiful horse. Like, I'm not saying he's as good a horse as Coach. He's, he's a good-looking horse. You wouldn't be trying to con me into a race, would you, little brother? Well, I might be thinking in those terms, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Be like stealing money. That horse will outrun Coach East or anything else in the territory. I wouldn't make all those wild statements till you put a saddle on him. Well, we'll get around to that. Thank you, Clint. I'll probably put a saddle on him tomorrow. Yeah, who are you going to have sitting in that saddle? Me, of course. I'll find out how fast he is. That's cruelly to animals. <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time selling a bent horse. <laughs> uh, just how large a spread were you looking for? Well, it depends. What is important is plenty of grazing land for horses. How many head? Well, I'd be starting off small. Well, there's some possibilities. I, uh, I didn't get your name. <laughs> you don't have to worry, Mr. Kendall. You'll get your percentage. The name is O'Casey. If you'd like, I'll sign a piece of paper stating that you told me about those places. Well, there's a place off north, not too far from town. What about uh, the Cartwright Ranch? The Ponderosa? You're talking about one of the biggest spreads in Nevada. <laughs> Just heard the name. Heard it was good fertile land. Maybe they'd sell a piece of it. Ben Cartwright, a piece of the Ponderosa? <laughs> no, you'd find it easier to try and buy a part of the Silver Queen. <laughs> but there are a couple of places out near there. Good ones, too. Yeah. The Larson Ranch borders on the Ponderosa, and the Croninger's just out west a little bit. Look, if you can wait till tomorrow, I'll show them to you. Well, I am in a bit of a hurry. Tell you what, if you just give me directions on uh, on these places and some of the others, I'll I'll let you know. All right. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh. Oh. Me that whistle this horse is gonna wear itself plumb out. Maybe Hop Singh's got some carrots in there to do the same trick. In the meantime, you keep teaching him his manners. I'll be back in a minute. You sure love him something fierce, don't you? He's a good horse, all right. Maybe it doesn't pay to love anything too much, though. Well, why is that? Someday you could lose him. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess you're right. But anyway, you'll be able to stay here with him for a couple more days. Oh, yes. I'm glad Mr. Cartwright invited us to stay overnight for your birthday. Yeah, so am I. Maybe I can even get to know Prince better. Joseph saw some stray horses beyond the South Ravine. Now, do you think you could pick them up? Oh, sure, I'll bring them in. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir. Um, do you think I could take the rig? The rig? The, with the pickup strays? <laughs> well, sure, why not? I, I could trail my horse. I see. You, uh, you weren't intending to go by yourself. Well, somebody ought to show her the ranch. That sounds very logical. 
Joseph, don't you think that sounds logical? Very logical. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask her to, to actually ride with me, but, but she, she, you know, she looks so, you know... Um, fragile? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are uh, fragile, delicate ones, Jamie. They're the ones that fool you the most. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cartwright, we ask her? Well, I'd, I'd like to, Jamie, but I just haven't time to go myself. I... I... I, I didn't mean that. I, I meant, uh... We ask her for me. Uh, Jamie, you know, there comes a time when a fella has to ask a girl for himself. And I think that time has come. Yes, I would think so. Uh, do you have a safe horse for her, Jamie? Gentle mare, perhaps? Something more suitable for a young girl? Oh, sure. She can have Francie. She's a sorrel mare. Rides just like a rocking chair. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, I'll get her saddled up. Thank you, Mrs. O'Casey. Right. I'll see you later, Cassie. Why? Cassie, word travels fast. A girl your age who rides too well. I suppose someone should hear about it. Are we always going to have to live like that? Afraid that, that someone's going to find out? No, darling. It's just now we've got to be more careful. Darling, we're going to have a whole new life together, you and me. In time, the, the past and everything we've been through will be forgotten. It's not easy to forget, is it, Mom? No, it isn't. sign of the strays over there. Yeah, I hope you're not getting too tired. I, I forgot we come so far. That's all right. How's the mare? You said it. Rides like a rocking chair. Well, Francie can really open up when she wants to, but she's a lady. She knows when she has to behave. I'm so glad. Uh, do you want to rest? You do. All right. Um, can I help you down? Thank you. Strong. Oh, shucks. You, you know, way more than a sack of potatoes. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. And I mean thanks. Oh, is that beautiful out here? It sure is. All the mountains and the canyons. Jamie, do you ever want to be a bird? No, I can't say that I have. <laughs> I have. Just think of it. Flying up there alone and peaceful. Nobody around. Just me in the sky. I think I'll try it. It's a long tumble down. Wouldn't you come get me? Oh, I don't know if it'd be worth it or not. Why not? Why? Well, you'd be all messed up. Folks would probably skin me alive when I get you back home. <laughs> Your pa never really did anything to hurt you, would he? Do you mean Mr. Carwright? No, no, he would. But he's... I mean, my own pa died nearly two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you needn't be. You see, I was alone, and... and Mr. Cartwright and Haas and Joe came along, and... I, I guess... They figured I was a stray, and they took me in. You know, now it's kind of funny. Well, what is? 
don't feel like a stray anymore. I hope my pa would understand. I think he would. But you know what? Sometimes I find myself calling Mr. Cartwright Pa now. Do you think that's wrong, Cassie? Oh, no, no. Jamie, you're so lucky. You know where you belong. Yeah, that's it. I really do. One of the strays. I'm gonna go get him. I'll go with you. You can't, Cassie. Why not? Well, because you're a girl. Well, what does that have to do with it? Well, girls are kind of... You know, fragile. Well, that's silly. Well, no, it isn't. Uh, this is a man's job. You gotta know how to ride and handle a horse. Yeah, but Jamie, I... Now you stay here where it's safe, and I'll be back with that straight quicker than you can pick a posy. Yeah. Why don't we see what kind of a rocking horse you really are? How you can ride. Jamie, you can't tell. Please, not anyone. Why not? If you can ride like that. Jamie, you've got to promise me. Promise me you won't tell. But why? My my mother made me promise I'd ride carefully. I mean, I'd never... Jamie, swear to me I'll be in terrible trouble. All right, Cassie. You swear it? Not your pa? Not anyone? I swear it. Howdy. Howdy. Can I help you? you? Sure can. I'm looking for the Larson Ranch. I must have missed it somewhere back there in the turn. Yeah, well, that's easy to do. We can get you straightened out in no time. Name's Cartwright. Ah, Kevin O'Casey. You sure have a beautiful spread here, Mr. Cartwright. I confess I've dreamed of owning one just like it someday. <laughs> At the moment, I'll have to settle for a good deal less. Well, you don't need a spread the size of the Ponderosa to breed horses, Mr. O'Casey. How did you know what business I was in, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I met your wife and daughter in Carson City. Oh, did you now? Yes. Well, you must know how blessed a man I am. Yeah, indeed I do. You must also understand how anxious I am to find the ranch that I need. The sooner I do that, the sooner I can rejoin my family back in Laramie. Mr. Casey, would you uh, come into the house for a moment? Sure. I think I might have a surprise for you. Oh. You've lied to us again, Kevin. But this time, it won't work. I swear to you, I did not know you were here. How could I? Not again, Kevin. Not again and not here. Even if I have to tell them, you are not going to do it here. Now, you haven't answered my question. How could I have known you were here? Prince Omar, you could have asked who bought them and where they could be found. You're right. I am lying. 
I did follow you, but not for the reasons you think. Oh, it's true, Normie. You've got to believe me. All right, I've lied in the past, but never about this. I've never lied about my love for you. Well, look. These are all the places that I've looked at be between here and Carson City. And here's the Larson Ranch. It's somewhere close by. Oh, I tell you, Norm, it's just perfect for the three of us. Cassie, you've heard me promise in the past that there could be an end to everything that's been. And there can be. Don't you see, without the two of you, there's nothing for me. All right. I'll just be going on. Kevin. Kevin, what is the truth? What is the real truth about everything you've been saying? That there's a man who loves you and that blessed child you gave him. And not for a moment have I ever been worthy of you. But finally, I've made my mind up to try, mind you, to try and change all of that. Oh, Kevin, if you only knew how much I want to believe that. Norma, you can. You can. I don't believe you, Papa. I don't know why you came here, but it's not why you said. Oh, it is, it is. All I know is you're going to hurt us again, Papa. And I'm not going to let you do it. I don't care what I have to do. I'm not going to let you hurt us. Say goodbye. Oh, I know. I don't like it any more than you do. But I thought and thought, and there's just nothing I can do. Oh, Prince, you belong here now. I mean, like Jamie does. I just don't belong anywhere. That's why I gotta go. You know, I know Mom's going to go with Papa. No matter what she says, I know she's going to go. And I mean, I don't know. I, I guess she can't help it, but I don't have to. I, well, if I do, I, I mean, it'll just all happen over again. I, Oh, Papa will keep at me and smile, and maybe he can't help it either, but he will, Prince. I know he will. I just can't stand it. I just can't stand it. Oh, oh Prince. Oh. I see. Can't wait for a little girl like you to be up, eh? Don't blame me much, so I came out to say good night to the prince myself. Brought him some carrots. You wanna feed him one? Here. Hey. What's the matter? What's going on? Are 
Are you afraid I'm gonna mistreat your Prince Omar? Is somebody mistreating you? Oh, you've all been wonderful. It's, it's, don't do it, Mr. Haas. Don't raise Prince Omar against my father's horse. Honey, I ain't got no intentions to. Yeah, but you will. Papa will talk to you into it some way. He always does. And then you'll lose the prince. Well, that ain't likely. But that's why Papa's here. He... He cheats people. Cassie, that's... That's a pretty tough thing for a little girl like you to be saying about her daddy. I wasn't too little to race his horse for him. Three times I rode captain against the prince, and three times I beat him and won him back. Well, I had to. To get the prince back. I love him. But I wouldn't do anything to hurt any of you. Please, you've got to believe me. <sighs> Her heart was just breaking. How's she feeling now? I don't know. All I'm for sure of is if she comes in the room with yeah, You're sure she's telling you the truth, huh? Joseph, if you could have seen that little face, you wouldn't have to ask that question. Some more coffee? Yeah. So Casey's got quite a thing going for him, huh? Sells prints at auction. He races captain against him, wins, ends up with the same two horses all over again. Get the auction money. Yeah. She says that he fakes a crippled knee or something. Then he bets the other fellow that even a kid can win on the captain. <laughs> Take any grown man, put him on Prince Omar, put Cassie, who weighs about, what, 85 pounds soaking weight on captain. Prince Omar's got to be the first one to tire after any appreciable distance. Yeah, every little girl should have a father like that. One thing, he hasn't asked you to race yet. Not yet, but she says he will. Are you sure that's the lowest price you can make it, Mr. Larson? That's it. Rock bottom. I see. Fifteen hundred, you say? I don't suppose you might consider... We'll say seven hundred. Nope. Well, I may want to bring my wife over if, if that would be all right with you. That's fine. Any time. Fine. Thanks very much. See you, Jed. <sighs> Old Jed's sort of hard-headed, but that's a dang good price. Oh, it is that. It's exactly what I've been looking for. Well, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd jump on it. Yeah, of course, but... In a case like this, I like my family in on any decisions. After all, it is going to be our home for all of us. Well, yeah, that's the way it should be. Kevin, you gave us your word. I also promised your ranch. We need 1,500. We've only got seven. Then find another one we can afford. I've looked everywhere. I tell you, there's none other like it to be had. Oh, it's blue water, green grazing land. A beautiful white house with a picket fence. A brand new barn to be a lovely home for the three of us. I tell you, it's, it's a dream come to pass. Another one of those beautiful dreams that never come true. Cassie was right about you. You planned this from the start. I never did. I tell you, it wasn't until I saw the Larson Ranch that I realized it was the only way to give you and Cassie what you should have. Oh, Cassie, I tell you, this time it's different. No. It's for our future, for our home. It's for us. Oh, no, it isn't. It's just for you. You just love winning and cheating people more than you do Mama and me. All right. You talk to her. You know what's at stake. She said everything I have to say. So be it. I can still do it on my own. This is um, two Jamie from Doc Martin. Huh? 
<laughs> oh, wow, it's great. It's just what I wanted. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> You're welcome, Jamie. <laughs> well, here's the big one. The one I've been waiting to open. <laughs> It says, to Jamie, from it, and it just has a question mark. It doesn't say who it's from. Well, open it. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> something from behind me. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great. The only thing you're getting from me, Jamie, is a promise. The first coat that Omar sires is yours. Hush, you mean it? Absolutely. Cassie, did you hear that? Thank you very much. Congratulations, Jamie. A call from Prince Omar. He couldn't do better than that. When are we going to see this prize of yours, Hoss? Hey, Doc, I thought nobody would ever ask. Come on. <laughs> Very much, Cassie. It's really the best present of all. You're welcome. Um, I have something for you. For me? On your birthday? Yeah. I, I wanted you to have it. I made it myself. Cassie? Gosh, what do I do now? Yeah, here he is. He's a real winner, Hoss. What did he cost you? Or aren't you telling? Oh, no big secret. Eight hundred dollars. And worth every cent of it. Yeah, well, twenty-seven of that belongs to Jamie, and he hadn't paid me yet either. Well, don't worry, I will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a toast. Of course, we all know it's young Jamie's day, and justly so. But it's also our good friend Hoss Cartwright. For he's one lucky man. A toast to his health. And the best of luck with his new stallion, who is the handsomest and most distinguished and second fastest horse in Nevada. Second fastest? I'm afraid that's true, horse. You see, the stallion that I ride, Captain, oh, he, he's much faster than uh, Prince Omar. That's ridiculous. Of course, if you'd be willing to... Oh, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, you're too good a friend. I couldn't take such advantage. Uh, what advantage? I mean, what were you about to propose? Oh, I just want you to just forget about it. No, wait a minute, wait, Paul. I want to pursue this. What were you about to suggest, Mr. O'Casey? Well, I was going to propose a match race for, say, two miles. Now, if the Prince Omar takes the captain, well, then my horse is yours. But if the captain takes the prince, well... Then Omar is yours. That's right. I see. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. O'Casey. You got yourself a bet right here and now. Son, do you know what you're doing? You're giving away over 100 pounds. I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, you're ready, horse. Where's the starting line? Oh, my. You seem terribly impatient for a man that's about to lose his horse. <laughs> ah. What is it? Oh. I pulled my knee. I pulled a tendon loose or something down there. I don't know what... You're not saying you don't intend to go through with this race, are you? Oh, no. No, no, no. I ain't saying that at all. Well, what are you saying, then? The fact is that this race is just to see which horse is the fastest, ain't it? That's I mean, right. That being the case, then it don't make no difference who's up, does it? Uh, I think I'll use a substitute. Here, young lady, come here. My rider is up, Mr. O'Casey. The race will start around behind the bar. Follow that road, Rat. 
there up around the canyon that comes back in about a quarter of a mile down here. We'll finish up right back here at the barn. That's fine. All right. I'm gonna beat you, Papa. I'm ready. Ready. All right, little Joe. Anytime you're ready, let her rip. Cassie, baby. Oh, you all right? Oh, dear God, what have I done? You came back. You could have won and you came back. Oh, darling. Oh, my love. Dang doctor gonna tell us what's the matter anyhow. Wasn't your fault, son. It was an accident. Now it's because of me it happened. I'm the only one responsible for it. What difference does it make? Who was responsible? As long as Cassie. I'll get some coffee. Mr. and Mrs. O'Casey. Can you come up here a minute, please? Cassie. Cassie. I told you. 
never tried me, you, Papa. You sure did. Cassie, you were right. Those days my head hurts a little. Now you just lie there. Just lie still and rest. Her reflexes all seem normal. Undoubtedly just a mild concussion. Get the rig back to you in a couple of days, Mr. Cartwright. No rush, no rush. I think it's a good deal for you, Casey. You run that place a larson for a year or so, maybe he'll bring the price down. Well, I work at it. In the meantime, there's a lot of forgiveness I have to earn. Oh, how's the patient? I'm fine. Really, I am. Good. This time I am leaving Paris. Not far. You behave now. I'll come back and see you. That's all right, isn't it? You bet you any time. Come on, darling. Still only sack potatoes. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Cartwright. No need. Just as long as that little girl has a happy home. Oh, that she will. Cassie, if you'd like a ride to school, I, I mean, it's on my way. Papa? Well, I... <laughs> Anytime you say. I'll see you on Monday. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye, -bye Mr. Thanks, Thanks very much. Now, what's this about Monday morning? Oh, Mr. Carby. <laughs>